All right, as I promised, we're going to go live to the Senate floor. Minority Leader Mitch McConnell delivering his remarks for the first time since he froze up last week in front of reporters. In a lagging labor market. I also had a chance to travel to the eastern part of, of Kentucky, where I met with health care and recovery workers in Manchester. Tragically, the substance abuse crisis has become even deadlier in recent years, especially in my home state. <clears throat> so we discuss what we're doing to combat it and find ways the federal government can fill the gaps. I also welcomed Dr. Raul Gupta, the national drug czar, back to the Commonwealth to hear more about what we're doing to fight back against addiction. I look forward to continuing working with Dr. Gupta to make Kentucky a safe and healthier place. Throughout the month, I was pleased to see over $6 million go toward addressing the opioid crisis at home. This federal funding will go a long way in supporting programs that offer a lifeline to countless Kentuckians who struggle with substance abuse. <coughs> in Bowling Green, I met with community bankers to discuss what Senate Republicans are doing to put a check on the Biden administration's reckless spending and regulatory overreach. At the Kentucky State Fair, I had a chance to indulge in some of the best that the bluegrass has to offer, like the Farm Bureau's famous ham breakfast. This event is a highlight of mine every August, and this year was no exception. I met with farmers from across the state to discuss their priorities and concerns as Congress takes up the all-important Farm Bill. This input will be vital to our work here in the Senate in the months ahead. In Northern Kentucky, I wrapped up the month with local business leaders to talk about some of our landmark infrastructure investments underway in the state, like overhauling the Brent Spence Bridge and revitalizing our river ports and railroads. From rural farm families to businesses of all sizes, every Kentuckian I met voiced the same message. It's too much government and too little being done to boost the economy and help everyday people. So as the Senate gets back to work in Washington, I'll keep these conversations and concerns in the forefront of my mind. This month, of course, <clears throat> Congress needs to address our nation's most pressing needs with timely appropriations, and we need to keep the lights on from October 1st. <clears throat> back in January, I pointed out that Washington Democrats, the new normal they faced, the American people had elected a divided government and demanded that we work together on our most basic governing responsibilities. Well, as I've reminded our colleagues regularly since then, that meant funding the government through regular order. It's been encouraging to see Senator Collins, Senator Murray, and our colleagues on the Appropriations Committee make serious headway in that direction. And next week, we'll aim to pass the first batch of their work out here on the floor. I've also made clear that the Senate's top priority must be keeping the American people safe. And this month, we'll have a chance to do that with supplemental appropriations for urgent national security and disaster relief priorities. We need to continue to invest in America's defense industrial base both to support our partners in today's fight and to help our forces deter tomorrow's threats. And as our colleagues from Florida and Hawaii know all too well, emergency personnel are working overtime to help communities shatter by natural disasters over the summer. So the Senate reconvenes with our work cut out for us and a deadline fast approaching. I hope each of our colleagues has returned ready to do their part.
Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.